Y'all, hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. As y'all know, we're working our way through a selection of winter themed reads. I did my winter themed TBR last week and all of the books on that list are either set somewhere wintry or they're set in winter times. There's something wintry about all of those books. So I have a few of those books ready to discuss today. And the first one is Peace Like a River. Y'all, this is Leif Anger's debut novel. It's a story set in Minnesota in the 60s, told from the point of view of 11-year-old Reuben Land. And Reuben tells us of his family's hardship and struggles. And y'all, the book is a story of hardship from page one all the way through to the end. It starts off with the story of young Reuben's birth. The doctor pronounces him dead and his dad comes tearing in refuses to accept that his son is dead, shakes him and beats him and gets him to breathe and then punches the doctor dead in the face. And the story sort of takes off from there as Reuben's dad miracles him back to life. And that's how Reuben presents his dad to us as a person who does miracles and deals with all of these struggles. Reuben's nuclear family are the main characters in the book. There's Reuben, of course, his dad, Jeremiah, who is this miracle man. And by miracle man, I mean actual like man who performs miracles. At one point, Reuben tells us a story of seeing his dad literally walk on air. And these are stories that Reuben presents to us as actual fact. Like these are things that his dad does. His sister Swede, who is something of a writing savant, she's younger than Reuben. Throughout the book, Swede writes this epic poem that we get a lot of that symbolizes our other main character, their older brother Davy, who's a teenager and he is far and away the most interesting character in the book. So here's the main problem that I have with Peace Like a River. Like I said, Davy is the main character in the book. Well, Davy ends up getting himself into trouble. So early on in the book, he goes on the lamb and we spend a lot of the book either looking for him or following him. So there's a huge part of the book that's almost like an absence of Davy. So not only do you miss him, you sort of long for his presence. So there's that, like you're missing the most interesting character. Much of what happens in the book is predictable and it's just so overwritten and so flowery that it's painful to get through. And I mean, painful. I've seen reviews that refer to this book as a modern classic. Y'all, please, dear Lord, please don't be assigning this to young people to read. If this were assigned to me to read in high school or even in college, I would take the Fs. I would not read this book. The only reason I finished it, well, I finished it for two reasons. One, to be able to review it and not have to call it a DNF. And two, I think I had such high hopes for it early on because Davy really was a promising character. So I started off with such high hopes for it. I think I just kept writing that throughout the book thinking, well, it's got to get better. And it wasn't until I started thinking about what I was gonna talk about in my review that I realized that it was Davy that was so interesting. So once Davy's gone, the whole thing just goes down the drain. I think this story itself is interesting, but I think dragging it out into a novel is a mistake. I think it would make a great short story or even a novella. I think the idea of having Swede write her epic poem to parallel Davy and to symbolize Davy is really interesting, but all of that is just too long and it's so much and it's just so overwritten and just torturous. So I do not recommend this book, but I do think it's an interesting story and I really wish that it were written as a short story or something shorter and just, just all the way around, I wish it were just less. Winter in Paradise by Erin Hildebrandt is my next book. This might seem like an interesting choice for a winter reads list, but it starts during winter in Chicago with our main character, Irene Steele. So I'm counting it. So let's talk about Irene. Irene's life isn't perfect, but it's perfect adjacent. She has a great husband who works a lot and is often traveling during the holidays. She has two fabulous sons who are grown up out of the house and no longer need her. She has her dream job where she's being pushed towards retirement. So she has all the elements of a perfect life. They're just not quite coming together perfectly for her. 
So she's working really hard, trying to keep things together. Then she gets that dreaded phone call that her husband has been killed in an accident on a business trip in the Virgin Islands. She had no idea that her husband had business in the Virgin Islands. So she has to pack up and head down there to figure out what's going on. So of course her sons come home and head with her from Chicago down to the Virgin Islands to sort things out and figure out what's going on. Well, when they get there, it's so much more than what they thought. They find out that their husband slash father has this whole separate life that he's been living down there in the Virgin Islands all this time. All these business trips he's been going on, that's where he's been going. So we follow them as they try to unpack this secret life of their now deceased loved one and figure out what he's been doing down there and what exactly it is that he's left behind. It's an interesting story. Their characters are a bit flat, the mother and the two sons, but the characters that they encounter on the island are very interesting. Of course, the brothers get into this sort of love triangle or love quadrangle, I guess, with a girl on the island. We learn that people that their husband slash father had relationships with, have relationships with other people, and all of that unfolds. It's really pretty interesting. There's beautiful scenery that we get taken through on the island. There are adventures on the island. We do some sightseeing, some touristy things. It's not brilliant or life-changing, but it is a fun read. It gets us out of the snowy winter for a little while, and that's really what I was looking for. The characters are fun to either like or dislike, to feel sorry for and cry with or laugh at, depending on which ones you're reading. And it's a fun island vacation in the middle of our snowy reads. Now, it's the first book in a trilogy. It ends on a very obvious, very contrived cliffhanger. I haven't read the other two books in the trilogy. I don't know if I will or I won't. I care about the characters while I'm reading the book, but I don't know that I care enough to continue with their lives after, but I might. I don't know. We'll see. We might head back to the islands again in the spring, just depending on what we decide to read later. My final book for this week is Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone, and y'all, this book is fantastic. It's not perfect, but y'all, it is very, very well written to capture the beauty and the danger of both the Alaskan landscape and the people that we meet along the way. The main characters in this book are the Albright family, who are a young family who moved to Alaska looking for a different kind of life after the dad, Ernst, comes home from Vietnam with all the demons, the violent outbursts, the night terrors, all those things. One of Ernst's buddies from Vietnam passed away and left him some land, maybe a homestead in Alaska, and Ernst decides that he and his wife and daughter should move there for a fresh start. He sees Alaska as a way to get away from the mess that he's made of things and to get away from the stresses and dangers of the lower 48. His young teenage daughter, Lenny, and her mom are reluctant to move so far away from everyone and everything that they know, but they feel like they have no choice. So they all pack up and they move to Alaska in the hopes that this is how they'll get back the earth that they knew and loved before he went away to Vietnam. Y'all, this is an amazing story of how this family has to work together to survive the dangers of the environment and the dangers inside their own home. They have to learn to depend on their community and to adjust to changes as they come, which is really, really challenging for Ernt. The short days and long nights make his night terrors increasingly worse and make him quicker and quicker to anger. And they as a family have to learn how to deal with all of that. This is an absolutely fantastic book, y'all. Kristen Hanna develops the setting and the characters beautifully. She builds a community of characters that you get to know so well that you understand and believe their interactions and conflicts as they develop. My only complaint is that the ending of the book feels a bit rushed. It feels like she spends so much time building the setting and the characters and all of the relationships and the interactions. And then at the end, she just kind of jams together what happens. And you just kind of get there too fast at the end. The last quarter or maybe fifth of the book 
almost feels like it should be an entire separate book of its own. So without knowing nothing about nothing, I wonder if Kristen Hanna debated making a second part to the book and then decided instead to just put it all together into one. It's a fairly long book, well over 400 pages. So I may have responded to my own complaint about the end of the book feeling jammed in there like that she felt like she just had to get it done or it would just be too long. But again, it's a fantastic book. I absolutely loved it. I just feel like after spending so much time getting to know these characters and spending a lot of time with them, we just jammed too much time and too much activity in there right at the end. So that's it for this week, y'all. I loved The Great Alone. I liked Winter in Paradise and I could not get out of Peace Like a River quickly enough. What about y'all? Let me know what you're reading. And if you have any winter themed recommendations for me, drop them in the comments or any recommendations in general. I'm always looking for my next great read. Y'all, thank you so much for coming to my channel. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I upload new food and fitness videos every Monday with some book videos sprinkled in between. See y'all in the next one.